I'm going to take some of my favourite uh, stately homes in the country, look at the wonderful objects, the treasures that they hold in their collections, and pick the one object in each case that I would take if I could just have one. I'm going to start today with Chatsworth. Chatsworth is the most beautiful house, stunning. It's in a drop-dead gorgeous location in the Peak District in Derbyshire. It's the home of the Cavendish family, the Dukes of Devonshire, and there have been some really colourful individuals within that family tree. I've already talked uh, about Bess of Hardwick, with whom the story of Chatsworth starts. Um, one of her descendants, the first Duke of Devonshire, was one of the so-called immortal earls who went over to Holland in 1688 to persuade William of Orange to come to England and depose King James II, who was showing worryingly Catholic tendencies. In the 18th century, we have the immensely colourful 5th Duke of Devonshire, who lived in a menage à trois with his wife, the 5th Duchess, and his mistress. Uh, more recently, uh, Kit Kennedy, the sister of JFK, married into the family, and the mother of the current Duke of Devonshire, the 12th Duke of Devonshire, his mother was one of the Mitford girls, one of the Mitford sisters, Debo. There have been 16 generations of the Cavendish family who've accumulated the most extraordinary private collection of art. In 1985, the National Gallery of Washington put on an exhibition. It was called The Treasure Houses of Britain. I've got uh, its catalogue. This is one of my prized possessions. And the loans from Chatsworth absolutely dominated that um, exhibition. What makes the collection at Chatsworth so special is that every generation of the family has bought uh, avant-garde contemporary art. Uh, I think a good case in point is uh, the Sixth Duke who in the 1800s constructed uh, a, a sculpture gallery and uniquely he displayed in the gallery contemporary work. He went to Italy, he befriended uh, Canova, the Italian sculptor, and he gave uh, Canova the brief of creating a piece for him to display at Chatsworth. That was the brief, no more information. And this is the modus operandi many of the Dukes of Devonshire have adopted since, including uh, the current one. Uh, so the Dukes have always befriended, uh, created very personal relationships with contemporary artists. Uh, fairly recently, Edmund de Waal, the ceramicist, was invited to spend time at Chatsworth and he created, while he was there, an installation called The Sounding Line, which you see when you visit Chatsworth today. Uh, it is a series of ceramic glazed pots of different heights. They're displayed on uh, a mantelpiece and they mingle with artefacts from ancient Egypt, Greece and Rome. There's a Tintoretti painting just next door. And so there's this real blend of the old and the new. Uh, one of the first things you see when you visit Chatsworth is a very modern take on the family portrait. It's actually a digital portrait uh, created by the artist Michael Craig Martin uh, of Laura Burlington. Uh, Laura Burlington is the daughter-in-law of the current Duke and Duchess. And that very modern digital portrait, which as you look at it, constantly changes colour, is sits opposite um, a 17th century low relief sculpture of uh, the goddess Diana bathing. So every Duke has collected contemporary art, so it's a very, very complete collection. We have wonderful Elizabethan needlework. We've got a, a, really the defining collection of old master drawings. Um, and some of these objects have fabulous uh, stories behind how they came into the collection um, as well. There's a lovely story that one of the old master drawings is a Leonardo, uh, it's Leader and the Swan, and of course it's completely priceless. In 1938, the then Duke, uh, the grandfather of the current Duke, was asked to lo lend it to an exhibition that was being put on in Milan. The Duke at the time was very reluctant uh, to do that uh, because he could see 
see the storm clouds gathering. He was aware that the Second World War was about to break out. Uh, but when the king lent some of his old master drawings, the Duke felt obliged to do so. So the, the, the work duly went off to Milan. Of course, the war then broke out and it was stuck in Milan. The family didn't get, back, get it back until 1947, by which time it had been damaged a bit. There's a definite white blotch in the middle of this fabulous Leonardo drawing. But the current Duke actually sees that as a badge of honour of the loan. Um, he thinks that the battle scar, if you like, just adds to the interest of the piece. Uh, you've got a fabulous collection of old master paintings as well as the drawings. You've got wonderful silverware, uh, glassware, textiles, porcelain and um, ceramics. And the library is, in my very humble opinion, the most beautiful library in any of the stately homes. There are something like 40,000 volumes in it. Um, it also includes a letter that was written in blood by the fifth duchess. Uh, she's the one who lived in the menage a trois with the fifth duke and his, his mistress. It's a letter that's written in blood um, addressed to her estranged son and anyone who's familiar with the story of the fifth duke and duchess. Uh, it was made into a film called The Duchess starring Keira Knightley and Ralph Fiennes will be familiar with, with, with that um, letter. The um, building is adorned with uh, ceiling paintings by the likes of Louis Laguerre, Antonio Verrio, wonderful wood carvings by the master carver Samuel Watson. So if I could just take one object, what would it be? Well, actually, this is quite an easy decision for me to make. It would be Lucian Freud's The Woman in the White Shirt. This is an oil portrait uh, painted um, in the late 1950s by the, at that stage, unknown uh, artist, Lucian Freud. It was commissioned by the father of the current Duke, uh, so the 11th Duke of Devonshire, and it's a portrait of his wife, Debo, the mother of the current Duke. Uh, the title, The w Woman in the White Shirt, was intentional so that the viewer isn't distracted by the status, if you like, of the um, sitter. It took three months for Lucian Freud to paint this um, and during that time a, a really long-standing friendship developed between the sitter and the artist and Debo wrote that all through her life whenever she came to London she would bring down a basket of eggs from her beloved hens at Chatsworth and leave them on uh, Lucian Freud's uh, doorstep. Uh, it's a painting that was made of the Duchess when she's in her late 30s. She actually looks quite a lot older than that uh, in the uh, picture, but that was kind of intentional on the part of uh, Lucien. He was trying to create this image that was a break away from the traditional flattering uh, family uh, portrait. The current Duke, uh, when he was about 15, um, apparently decided to spend a lot of time acquainting himself with this painting and he says that he sat in front of it for half an hour at a time and grew to absolutely love it and really saw his mother in the um, painting and he actually goes on to say that it's, he, in his opinion it's the most beautiful item in the collection. Now, I love it because I love Debo for a start. Uh, she was one of the Mitford sisters, her um, one of her elder sisters, Nancy, was the writer. Uh, another sister, Diana, uh, married Oswald Mosley, who was the, uh, head, of the um, head of the British Union of Fascists. Um, another sister, Unity, literally fell in love with Hitler and shot herself at the day that war was declared between uh, England and Germany, her two beloved countries. Another sister, Jessica, uh, was a communist. Debo herself, the youngest in the family, when she was a young girl, said that she wanted to be a duchess when she grew up, and that's exactly uh, what happened. Um, I also like it because um, it's thanks to Debo that we're all able to enjoy Chatsworth in the way that we do today, because when she and her husband inherited um, the estate, uh, in the early 1950s, they were clobbered with the most colossal inter inheritance tax bill. Uh, they owed the equivalent of 80% of the value of the entire estate in death duties. And it was largely due to the energy of Debo, who opened the house to the public, and she was really blazing the trail in terms of doing that, uh, that the house and the collection are as we see them today, and we're able to enjoy them. And then 
finally, I love this painting because I think it really encapsulates the modus operandi that the Cavendishes have always had of investing in the art of avant-garde, contemporary, innovative artists. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, next time I'm going to choose another of my favourite houses and pick one of the items in that collection that I would take if I could just have one. Mm -hmm.